All right, I've got a very important question. Uh, not that these haven't been. <laughs> I have uh, I have eight children. Um, you have our condolences. <laughs> <laughs> well, before before I had any children, I had eight theories about how to raise children. Now I have eight children, no theories about how to raise children. Um, but I have a daughter. Uh, her name is Serena, um, and. When she was 11, 10, 9, whatever it is, years old, she used to always complain to me about uh, my fathering, about my parenting, you know, giving me lots of advice about I do this wrong and I do that wrong. And after a while, I just got, you know, fed up with it one day, and I had been listening to some of the things that Abraham had said. And uh, I said to her, I said, you know, if you don't like the kind of father that I am, the kind of parent that I am, then you shouldn't be blaming me. I said, you should really be taking a look at yourself and asking yourself, why in the world would you pick me to be your father? <laughs> and she stood on her hands and put her hips on and you know, rolled her eyes back, you know, that 10-year-old kind of look, and said, uh, you're telling me that I actually picked you to be my father and picked mom to be my mom. I said, exactly right. I said, and when you're making important decisions like that, you should really be very careful about it. Even more than that, <laughs> you are right now evoking the kind of parent I am being. Your expectation is so powerful, I cannot override it. Mm. <laughs> I could, but we seem to have rendezvoused on a vibrational spot that makes each of us want to blame the other for what's going mm. on here. Mm. So her final response to me, which was the best response I think I've ever heard from one of my kids, she said, well, then I must have been in a hurry. <laughs> <laughs> and my question to you, Abraham, is, um, is there anything before we show up in this world of form? Yes. Um, that um, we have any access to who, we, who our parents yes. are going to be, what... How does that work? Well, okay. you ha there's a powerful trajectory. Hmm. There's a powerful but general plan. You knew that you were coming forth and you knew that the variety would be perfect. You knew that the variety would inspire you to your personal new preferences. But when you say you, you knew, uh, in, in what way? I mean, um, you, you don't, there's no brain to work with. There's no body to work with. You're in well, this formless... What does brain have to do with consciousness and knowing? That's, you're the one who has to answer that. <laughs> the, the, the brain is the focusing mechanism that you are utilizing here. Mm -hmm. But there is consciousness that is outside of what you call the human focus of right. the brain. That's this vibrational thing. In other words, we talk about vibration. We talk about energy. We talk about thought. Mm -hmm. We talk about emotion. But really, by the time we're talking about emotion... Emotion is a manifestation. There's quite a bit of momentum going before emotion shows you how well aligned or not you are with that broader perspective. So before you came into this physical body, right. you were consciousness and you were eager about projecting some of that consciousness into a physical body because you knew that in this physical body with all of the other wonderful and diverse physical beings that would share this time space reality with you you knew that you would be inspired to new ideas and that really turned you on because you know that you are an eternal being and you know that without some new idea eternity ceases you weren't worried about that because you knew the time space reality would inspire the new ideas so you had this general sense of your well-being you understood your absolute worthiness the thing that is the the thing that is so beneficial for Esther and now for us and therefore for all of you in experiencing the transition that Jerry has made into non-physical is that she can feel his keen interest in things she's doing now mm. she knows his consciousness and she knows what he's interested in she can feel when she finds alignment with what he's thinking. She can feel when she's off on a path that he's not a vibrational match to. And Jerry is just an example of that non-physical consciousness that has always been there. This con continuum that humans think 
uh, this generation is born and then another and then another that's not the continuum of life the continuum is you come forth into this physical body and you mix it up and you find things that interest you that delight you that encourage you that amaze you you find things that are desirable to you and as you find those things while you're in your physical body those desires don't cease when you re-emerge into non-physical instead you join that cadre of non-physical consciousness who is still interested in the things that you were interested in only now you're interested from no resistance now when you desire something you don't shoot it in the foot with doubt now when you desire something about yourself you don't lay it over with unworthiness now you are pure positive energy you see oh when you feel in your physical body thrill bumps that's us having a moment with you those thrill mm. bumps that you think are yours are you resonating with the way we feel mm. so never confuse the fact that we are non-physically focused and therefore formless with being mindless or with being emotionless or being interestedlessness right so uh, so that was before you know I mean I know in a timeless world there's no before and after but um, 